Are you using PS exec to pwn your targets? Well, that might be what's getting you caught. Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, the YouTube series that helps you level up in offensive and defensive cybersecurity. Whether you're a seasoned red team operator or just getting started with ethical hacking, this is where you sharpen the skills that matter most. And today's skill, stealth. Because in real world environments, you're not just up against a computer. It's you versus the blue team, and they are actively looking for signs that someone like you is in their network. And their best weapon is logs. Every action you take, from running a command to escalating privileges, it all leaves behind traces. And those traces feed into seams, security information and event management systems. And they, these seams, they correlate activity, they trigger alerts and they give blue teamers the power to detect, investigate and shut you down. So in this episode, we will show you how to think like a defender. Because if you know what they are looking for, then you can adapt your attacks and stay one step ahead. Now logs, they don't just record what happened. They decide whether you get caught. So if your command triggers the right event ID and that event gets picked up by a rule in the seam, that's then a ticket straight to the blue team's dashboard. And once you've been seen, it's really only a matter of time before you're kicked out, locked down or burned entirely. And my biggest fail ever on a red team was accidentally booting up a VM in the target's network with the host name Kali. I shut down the VM as fast as I could, but it was too late. The blue team noticed me and locked me out of the network. So if you want to stay in your target's environment to explore and escalate, then you need to understand how your actions are being monitored. And that then allows us to flip the script. If we study the same logs that defenders use and test their techniques in Hack the Box Labs, then we can choose attack methods that don't raise red flags. And that's what this episode is about. Learning to see yourself through the blue team's eyes so you can avoid being seen at all. Now, first things first, you need to know where your activity shows up. When you run a command on a Windows machine, it might get recorded locally in the event viewer. But in real enterprise networks, well, that's just the beginning, because most defenders use a SIEM, a security information and event management system, and they use this to centralize logs from everywhere. And that includes your Windows event logs, Sysmon, PowerShell logs, firewall events, antivirus and EDR telemetry, and so on. So instead of chasing down dozens of individual logs, the defenders, they get a single interface that shows a timeline of what's happening across the environment. And tools like Splunk, Sentinel and QRadar are constantly pulling in and analyzing this data. So if you're trying to fly under the radar, then you need to think bigger than just what's on this machine. You need to ask, what systems are collecting my activity and what are they looking for? Now, if you want to improve your understanding of SIEM systems, then definitely check out Hack the Box's Certified Junior Cybersecurity Associate certification that gives you all the tools you need to jumpstart your cybersecurity career. Not everything you do gets logged but there are certain actions that are guaranteed to leave some uncovered tracks. And let's break down a few Windows event types that every red teamer should know. First of all, 4624 and 4625 are successful and failed logins. And this includes brute force attempts and locked out accounts. 4688 is process creation. 
anytime you start a new process like PowerShell, CMD or a binary, this event captures it. 7045 means that a new service was installed. If your persistence method involves creating a malicious service, then this is what lights up. 5140 is access to a network share. One of my favorite escalation methods is digging through SMB for plain text credentials, but sadly it's heavily logged. And 4104 stands for PowerShell Script Block Logging. This one shows the actual contents of PowerShell scripts, so even obfuscated commands can be revealed. And if Sysmon is installed, well then you'll see even more detail, network connections, DLL loads, process injection, pretty much everything that defenders love to see. So these are the events that give the blue team everything they need to catch and contain you. But us attackers, we also have some tricks up our sleeve to evade that detection. In red teaming, the easiest technique is rarely the quietest. Take lateral movement for example. You could use PS exec to pop a remote shell. And that works, but it's also really easy to detect. Why? Well, it triggers event 7045, a service was installed in the system. And look, on the left here, I have our victim system with the event viewer opened up and we're looking at these logs here. On the right, I then have my attacker's system. And imagine that as the attacker, we have the administrator credentials and we're now trying to remotely log in. We can do that using impacket's PS exec like this. And just like that, we get a shell. But on the victim side, we can now refresh the logs and see them. And here's the 7045 stating that a service was installed in the system. And this one is highly suspicious and sure to be detected. Beyond that, we also see this 4688 that a new process was created. And this is an exe being executed and the exe has this odd name. Another telltale sign that something weird is going on. So smart red teamers, they use lower noise techniques. Instead of PSExec, use WMI or DCOM for lateral movement. And let's try using Impacket's WMI exec like this. And once again, we get our shell. However, this time in the logs, we just have some logon events. No service was installed event. And all of the process creation events are just usual processes like cmd.exe or conhost.exe. This is much less detectable. And don't get me wrong, great SOC teams will still catch on to this, but it's already a huge improvement over PS exec. And if you're not convinced yet, then look at this. I disabled Windows Defender for this demo because PS exec is actually blocked by Windows Defender. But let me quickly enable Defender's real-time monitoring again using this command. And if we now rerun the PS exec command, we see it fails. It gets blocked. However, even with Defender enabled, our WMI command still succeeds. Cool, right? So, what is the best way for you to train the skills of evading detection? Well, you can build your own lab, enable logging, and replay attacks step by step to see what gets detected. You could even do this after routing a hack the box machine. Once you get administrator access, perform your attacks again and look at the logs. What was detected? Did that lateral movement spawn a service? Can you find ways to make this random GitHub exploit you found more evasive? By studying the logs after each attack phase, you're learning what leaves a footprint and then you can adjust your approach. And once you know how defenders respond to certain triggers, then you can start playing with misdirection. If you want to distract a SOC analyst, then you can just trigger a low-level alert in one part of the network while your real attack actually happens elsewhere. 
Now let's quickly talk about some tools you can use to stay quiet. And here are a few worth noting. PowerView, for example. PowerView is a toolkit for enumerating Active Directory and instead of blasting noisy commands, it makes targeted LDAP queries that often go unnoticed because throughout a network, there's usually enough real LDAP queries happening to mask yours. Next up, we have Sharpsploit. And Sharpsploit is a C-sharp post-exploitation library that's great for token impersonation, privilege escalation, and so on, with a minimal footprint. And lastly, we also have Invoke Phantom. And this script is really cool. It suspends EDR-related threats on the endpoint. So it effectively blinds some defenses during execution, it can be risky, but if it works, it's very powerful. Now, if you want to master all of these techniques in a hands-on way, then you need to have a look at Hack the Box's CAPE certification. And CAPE stands for Certified Active Directory Pen Testing Expert, and it is the certification to hold if you want to become a Red Team Expert. Today, we looked at one thing that decides whether you succeed or get caught during a red team engagement. Logs. We talked about where your activity shows up, from local event logs to centralized scenes. We covered the events that get triggered by common attacker actions, and we looked at tactics that raise red flags and techniques that help you blend in. Now, if you want to keep leveling up your stealth game, then check out the Hack the Box Academy's AD pen testing content and, in specific, the CAPE certification. Now, hit like, subscribe, and tell us in the comments what is the worst way you've ever been caught in a red team? That's all, folks. I'll see you later.